Hello everyone and thank you for joining me on another exciting furniture flip. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and today I'm working on this five drawer tall boy dresser that's in really good structural shape and it just needs some help with an all new updated look. And with that out of the way, let's jump straight into this one and get our hands dirty. As always, it's best to remove any hardware and drawers in order to prep for a good cleaning before preparing to sand. I used TSP degreaser that's diluted with plenty of water in order to remove all the dirt and grime off of my pieces. When removing the drawers, it's a good idea to number them so that way you can place them back in their original slots when you go to put your piece back together. As you can tell, the dresser is very, very dirty on the inside and it's always a good idea to clean it so that if the customer ever removes the drawers, they can tell that you really did take your time to clean it on the inside as well as the outside. I'm using my favorite finish stripper made by Clean Strip to get the base down to bare wood because my plan is to give it a nice whitewash in order to contrast against the paint that I'm going to be using. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area because using a chemical stripper like this can tend to smell very, very strong and you don't want to be breathing that stuff in. I'm using mineral spirits with a piece of steel wool in order to remove the rest of the finish and deactivate the stripper that I was using previously. For the two top drawers, they had these trim pieces around the outer edges, and one of them was missing a piece, so I decided to remove them completely, that way I can give it a nice more modern look, and I couldn't replicate that piece anyway, so it just made sense. In the next few clips, you'll see me stripping these top drawers down to bare wood because I planned on doing them with a the whitewash as well as the same color as the base, but I noticed after removing the trim pieces that the veneer or whatever wood was underneath wasn't really giving me a consistent color, so I decided to just end up painting them in the end. I'm using a 150 grit sanding pad on my orbital sander in order to remove all the finish that the stripper left behind. Scuff sanding the body of the dresser in order to prep it for paint is a very good idea because it helps the paint adhere to the body, so I'm using 150 grit sandpaper on this just to give it a quick scuff coat before I start painting. It goes without saying, but wiping your pieces down after sanding is very important so that you don't spray over all that dust and the paint probably won't stick very good. I like to use Bondo wood filler for deep gouges and scratches as it tends to stick better, but work quickly and try not to mix big batches as this stuff tends to dry fairly quickly. Bondo comes in two parts that you have to mix together in order for it to work, but try not to add too much of the activator as it will dry before you can even start to use it. Once it's dry, the dresser is ready to be sanded and prepped for some paint, which is my favorite part of any project. It's where you get to see this piece and what it's potentially going to look like. Prepping is one of the most important parts of any project, so because I use an HVLP spray gun, to avoid any overspray, I mask off the body of all the drawers and just expose the face only.
For this project, I stopped by Sherwin-Williams to pick up some shade-grown green color paint with a satin finish. It's the color that I chose to go with this and I think it's going to complement the very light base in the end. When using an HVOP spray gun, you have to dilute your paint with water in order for it to expel enough material to actually coat your piece. Using disposable paint filters helps to keep junk out of your paint and off of your pieces and it also helps to extend the life of your HVLP gun and makes cleanup a very simple task. Because the paint has a built-in primer, I don't have to use an actual primer as my base coat, especially because this is a darker color and I didn't really sand to any bare wood so I think we should be fine. I'll do about two coats of paint. The first coat is usually a lighter coat and then the second coat is when I go a little heavier. But in between each coat, I'll use 220 grit sandpaper to scuff it up so that way there's a very good bond in between each layer of paint. I'd like to take this time to thank everybody who stops in and watches all my videos. I really appreciate all the comments that everybody leaves below and all the positive feedback that I'm getting. I really truly do appreciate it and it really helps me to want to continue to share my journey of furniture flipping with everyone. So again, thank you guys very much. For the second coat, this is where I like to go for full coverage. You just have to be careful for the panels on the sides of the dresser that you don't go too heavy because you don't want to cause any running issues. That will cause a lot of extra work for you. For my top coat, I'm using Verithane polyurethane with a satin finish and I'm mixing it with my green paint so that way I can keep from causing a lot of streaks or any hazing that can happen if you use it by itself. And also adding paint to it gives you almost extra layers of paint on it so it just makes it that much more durable. Same thing for the paint, I like to do about two maybe even three coats of the polyurethane. And I like to do the scuff sanding in between each of those coats as well, but for this I use a 400 grit sandpaper so that way you don't see those scratches through the finish. Unfortunately the hardware wasn't real brass, so I just decided to clean it up and give it a coat of paint. Uh, I'm using a gold color, but it's not like a typical very yellow gold, it's more of a bronzy gold, and I think it's going to really look good with that green. I'm removing the tape to expose the bare wood because I'm going to whitewash it with a stain that I got from Home Depot. It's made by Verithane as well and it's just an easier way to do whitewash without having to try to mix white paint with water and try to get that consistency and paint tends to dry a lot faster than this stain so it's a pretty good option. Now that the hardware has about three coats of the gold paint on it, it's dry and it's ready to be installed. The inside and the outside of all the drawers looked pretty thirsty, so I decided to grab my Howard Speed and Wax and give them a couple of coats just to bring it back to life. You rub it on and you let it sit for about 20 minutes and then you go ahead and rub off the excess and it leaves behind a really nice finish and a really awesome smell. I didn't show it but I finished the base in the same Howard Speed and Wax so that way I didn't have to spray it again with poly. And now that we're done let's go ahead and put all the drawers back in and let's take a look at how this turned out.
I have to say that I'm very pleased with the contrast between all the colors on this one, and as I like to do at the end of the video is go over all the numbers. This piece is for a client of mine, which means I didn't have any upfront costs for the dresser itself. The paint did cost me $25, and the gold paint cost me about $10. I already had the whitewash and other materials used, but I'll add another $20 in for that, putting me at $55 total. I have about 6 hours of labor, and I charge $450 to do all the work and that left me with a profit of $395, or around roughly $44 an hour. A big thank you to everyone who made it to the end of the video to see all the numbers and see what the piece turned out to be. I'm very thankful for you guys for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you on my